Hello, everybody. Good morning. Oh, wrong screen. Now I got it. I did Yay. it. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Happy Sunday. Uh, Sunday morning, afternoon, evening, wherever it is you are. Uh, welcome to Coffee Break. I'm Spencer Campbell, uh, aka Gila RPGs, Gila RPGs. Uh, Coffee Break is a chance for me to sit down with uh, cool folks and friends of mine in the RPG design scene and just hang out and chat over some coffee. Uh, and so I have a wonderful friend here uh, who I'm going to let introduce themselves in just a second. Um, but some cool, fun, first time uh, people here in the chat. So welcome to Bappy Go Lucky uh, and uh, Tog the Bard and Charlotte Browns Brooks. So glad to have you all here. Hi, Marlo. Hi, Tig. Ah, uh, excellent. Yes. <laughs> Cat knows who these people are. Uh, speaking Cat. of cats, uh, Cat, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself to the fine Gosh. folks at home? Gosh, I'm Cat. Hi. Um, I'm Cat. I like to do RPG stuff and record things. Oh, I my games are at Peach Garden Games. We should just get those host... links out. <laughs> yes. And I'm the host king of the podcast, Sword of Symphonies, where my good, cool friends play test my big adventure game. That is very wow. cool. I thought I, listen, I'm a morning person, so I thought I would be capable of doing a canned introduction. I ain't. You <laughs> nailed <I> it. <laughs> nailed it. <laughs> uh, that's great. I'm going to throw uh, one of the links in chat right now just for folks, uh, and I'm Yay. sure that can help uh, connect them to everything. Um, yeah. Cool beans. Well... When I was um, when I was first putting mm -hmm. together like a list of folks who wanted to do this, you had reached out early on, and I was like, "Absolutely, this is gonna be great." Uh, I and then it, coffee. You got a coffee? No, I was just oh. saying, yeah, I love coffee. Oh. So I was like, <laughs> a stream where we drink a coffee is absolutely my jam and I'm, my brand. I'm down. And then it just happened to turn out that you had a big cool thing coming up too. So I was like, oh mm -hmm. well that it only makes sense for us to chat sooner rather than later. Um, so yeah. almost certainly we're going to talk about that. We were just before this for folks uh, who aren't, uh, obviously none of you would know this because you couldn't hear. We were talking about what we fidget with during streams and stuff yeah. like that. Uh, I've got my D30 here that I just spin like a top. And I'm sure people who watch the design stream might see me like looking off to the side. It's me spinning the top. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. <laughs> When yeah, that's I've happening. got this little bubble poppy octopus that lives on my desk. I've actually got a drawer full of fidgets because I'm incorrigible. <laughs> I've got my, I used to drive uh, poor Dylan nuts. Actually, I still do. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Even though they're used to me by now. But like while we're playing, um, we're only recording audio. So I've got my head down on my desk and I'm like doing journal pages uh -huh. or calligraphy practice or anything to keep my hands busy while i listen to the game right and all our poor gm sees is the top of my head right <laughs> i need to be better about that sorry dylan i know you're not here we were talking about that last week uh chris Bizet and i about like just like distracting not distracting ourselves but just like occupying ourselves while other people are doing their turns and stuff and i remember like will yopst mentions that they play the guitar so like they'll mute themselves and be like playing the guitar by themselves like while other people are doing it it's like that's brilliant right just like you do you yeah. that's fine with me i wish i could do that with my to students to let them just like play the guitar while i'm talking but it might be a little distracting a little bit a little bit <laughs> eat a burger while playing or a whole ass chicken says bappy go lucky <laughs> a whole ass chicken I can't eat a whole ass chicken anymore. Stop <laughs> eating me. Oh. Oh, Adam Bell, when playing games online, I'm never more focused on what people are saying than when I'm cooking dinner or doing dishes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay, well, thank you for understanding my lifestyle, Marla. But <laughs> totally. I I that like I'm so much more in the zone when I'm doing something like that than if I'm act if I'm trying to sit there and actively pay attention i'm exactly. not i'm not gathering as much information that way yeah i got really into journaling so i've got my we i've got my journal and i've nice. decorated the pages with washi tape and this is what i do on sunday nights during our game 
Do they have little prompts on the page? Is that what those were or? Yeah, I've got a little page for new things I learned during the day and oh. a little section for the meds and a little section for my taskies. That's super it's... cool. Yeah, I love my Because a blank page is terrifying to me, but a page that oh has a couple of things on it that I can immediately like levers and buttons and stuff like that that I can mess with, that, uh, that, I, that I could do. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And that was, I think I... I never got into journaling until like last, actually this summer. Mm. And it wasn't until I was like, oh, I can just set this page up and then only write down the things I care about. It's just for me and who cares. That's awesome. That's really, yeah. really, that's clever and good. And I should probably do something like that. Because again, the, the blank page scares me. And so I go, I can't do that. I simply can't. <laughs> yep. <laughs> And now I look at a blank page and instead of thinking, oh, God, what do I fill this with? I think, well, what what in my obscenely large collection of washi tape am I going to adorn this page with? <laughs> I need Charlotte, to absolutely. Charlotte, I have so many notebooks. <laughs> do you? Do you just have tons yes. and tons of notebooks? <laughs> I've only started using them recently because suddenly I think something clicked in my head this year and it's just like just use the notebooks <laughs> wow. just, just do it and i don't know why i wasn't able to before then but i need to get like a nice notebook i have tons and tons of like legal pads you know like this and i'm um... using them to write notes but this isn't helpful to me because i've got five of them here on my desk and so i have to remember like which legal pad i wrote a note for a play test or a game on and then like find it and then flip through it i need to get just like a nice journal of some kind <laughs> legal pads versus illegal journals <laughs> very good I've got, I've got a couple notebooks here this is my gm page for road to heaven it's just a plain craft notebook that i went ham with washi tape on nice and that's i also went ham inside here's the episode log it looks so nice that's such a like a well-designed and well collected journal right there i'm jealous using him washi tape <laughs> i don't know why i, I remember you those. mentioning that <laughs> i don't know why i did it but i love it and i also have this notebook that i just started in which i got from tabletop hot dish mm. they snu they snuck it into my order when they printed blazing him and i came here to win for me nice i can't recommend tabletop hot dish enough so i i don't i'm not familiar with with tabletop hot dish well, they're a uh they're a small press printer in the ttrpg scene i'm looking them up right now tabletop hot dish they are absolutely wonderful to work with they just launched some journals like oh neat they got back to me they were like hey we just got a new printer it's gonna be a little bit more expensive but it'll get more colors in blazing him and i'm like yes <laughs> do <rainbows."> it <laughs> give me the colors and give me every possible rainbow they completely delivered Oh, I'm totally going to leave this tab open so that I can look at this later. That's very awesome. Oh, yeah. oh I love working with them. That's super neat. Um, so, uh, obviously, we got a big thing to talk about. We, uh, we You know, normally, you know, for a lot of these, it's just kind of like hanging out and chatting about whatever. But you've got a you've got a project. You've got a thing that we want to talk about. The um, thing on the go. What is the thing on the go that the people need to know about? I am gearing up to produce a season of actual play podcast set in a Lumen game. My Lumen game, Blazing Him. So excited about that. I'm I am desperately. I've been excited about this <laughs> since I wrote Blazing Him. I've wanted to do this. And I've got my cast together. They're without exception amazing. I adore my cast. Um, I've got my co-producer, Aaron, of Super Idols RPG, who is just like the expert on magical girl anime. I love Aaron. We need to get we need to do a power lunch because Aaron lives in the same city as me. But that's for another time. <laughs> um and I've got a Kickstarter running to because um, the editor of Sword of Symphonies, the mm -hmm. mastermind editor of Sword of Symphonies, Kathleen, I cannot keep asking her to work for free on my projects. Mm. <laughs> it's amazing that she doesn't ask me to pay her for Sword of Symphonies. However, if I put more work on her plate, I'm going to pay her for it. Yes. And so that's that's Roland. Hey, Roland's here. 
Roland, we you just missed journals. us, like, yeah, bullshitting about fidgeting with stuff in journals, but now we're talking about blazing him. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so we're gonna we're raising money to pay an editor. We're raising money raising money to pay a transcriber. Stretch goals are gonna go to paying the cast. And if we're really lucky, and if everyone helps us with their hearts and their feelings, and everyone's feelings become one, like in an idol anime, then I will be able to get an OST. Nice. Which I want so badly. <laughs> Do you have somebody lined it. up in like in mind for yeah. doing the oh oh nice kathleen is also a composer wow kathleen is a masterful composer and her work on sort of symphonies is top notch but again that's for her if it's for me she's got to get paid right well i just threw for folks who are, are watching along uh i threw the the link to the kickstarter in chat um because the kickstarter is for raising funds for the ap uh, yes. for the for the game and it's for an ap of the game blazing him so i i assume i it seems like a lot of folks here in chat are familiar with you cat <laughs> and probably Me. this game but like Hi, you know in case anybody is watching in and isn't familiar with blazing him or like listens to this mm -hmm. podcast later on like what is what's blazing him what's your pitch for that my super transparent anime fan game based <laughs> in the lumens engine Perfect. Nailed it. I didn't even <laughs> pretend. I didn't even pretend I wasn't just making a Simple Gear fan game. It's about a future in which angels have descended from heaven to annihilate humanity, and our only hope against them are music powered battle suits. God, what a pitch. What an unbelievably <laughs> powerful pitch. That I love is. it. <laughs> I love blazing him. I uh, I've been running one shots for training to make sure that I can like mm. run a combat in a reasonable episode length of time. Yeah, and so I've been playing more and more blazing him since we've started this project for Roar to Heaven, and I love running this game. That's it's awesome. So fun. That's awesome. Actually, um, I, I wanted to I want to talk more about blazing him, but you you mentioned a point, and I just want to say it while it's still fresh in my head. You've been practicing for like a getting it to like a length of an episode. And this is something that you and I talked about before when you interviewed me yes. <laughs> uh, uh, about like Lumen and AP and stuff like that. So when you say like a length of an episode, I'm curious what you was like in your mind for like an ideal episode length for this show. We're aiming for around 90 minutes. Cool. And that's going to include a combat and some out of combat scenes. Okay. My goal is one scene that's driven by me and then one scene that's driven by one of my cast members. Oh, cool. That's very cool. So that's that's the dream. That's the plan. And we can swing it. The last couple combats I've run have come in around 45 to 60 minutes. Okay. We can do it. Cool. That's awesome. That's very, very cool. Oh, well, it looks like I'm so excited. folks in chat are saying that you nailed the timing in the practice game. So that's... Yeah, Take helped me train. That's super cool. Like, so what I... I call it the danger room when we do our play tests for games because it's like the X-Men danger room where they nice. go in and they just like face off different weird scenarios to see how the game works. And you're kind of doing a danger room for a an AP, which is cool. I don't know if that's maybe again, I I just I'm not familiar with AP world. Is that like a thing that most people do or do you think that's like something that you are specifically like i want to do this for a reason like i'm, <laughs> well, I'm just thinking about that i haven't thought about that well, before here's the thing you gotta know about cat ah excellent cat watches a lot of idol anime mm. about singing and dancing and making dreams <laughs> come true with the power of music and before a big gig you have to train. Mm. And so I was on the elliptical and I was like, training. How is this helping me <laughs> podcast? I have no idea. So <laughs> then I decided that I needed to do training that was maybe a little bit more applicable <laughs> to what <laughs> I was trying to do. <laughs> so I decided to run these training one shots. I think that's so cool. I think that's <laughs> such a fun idea to like. It helps you get comfortable with running the system and helps you get a sense of like timing of things rather than just like jumping in and going, uh oh, this episode was three hours long because we had no idea how this was going to work. Yeah. Uh, that's a, I think that's brilliant. I think that's a super cool idea. Well, thank you. <laughs> it's been fun too because when we did our casting process, mm. we had 51 applications, which blows Whoa. my mind. 
that's 51 people who looked at my hey i want to make a symfo gear ap and wanted to like and wanted to support that vision so like all 51 of them are very precious to me and then we took a third of them 17 and we invited them to a party to see how everyone got along to see mm. how everyone's mic manners were to see what everyone's setup sounded like and then we invited the top six to play one shots with us what a cool cool way of so you had like a party so this is just like everybody hanging out at like a, a zoom call together or like a discord, a, a discord yeah. uh and just yeah. chatting that's super neat just getting just a vibe check sort of exactly. thing exactly there were a couple of people who couldn't make the party so we had slightly more structured interviews with them and those were a little bit awkward i just mm. I, the party was where it's at and but the great thing about these training one shots is that I'm getting to play with people who weren't part of that final selection process, mm. or I'm getting to play again with people who were part of the final selection process, but didn't make it into the cast. Right. So I'm still getting to play with all these great people I got attached to at the party, which is wonderful. That's cool. So everybody still gets to be kind of involved in some capacity and you still get to stay connected and you are honing your skills in preparing for this AP. Yes. That's super neat. What a cool process. And so you've got your cast all set. You've got everything all lined up. Uh, they're, all <laughs> they're all perfect. Um, I do want to obviously talk about the AP, but I think um, I, I think I want to go back and talk about Blazing Him just like yeah. a little bit more, just because it's so cool. Um, I, oh. I, what I wanted, I wanted to talk to you about this thing that I feel like you mentioned a long time ago. And I can't even remember the context in which you mentioned it, but I feel like I remember you saying something along the lines of like, uh, like Blazing Him was, designing that was very different than any other game that you had designed before. Am I correct in remembering yeah. you saying something like that? Because um, if, uh, if you've read other cat games, many of you have, many of you haven't, and that's okay, I still love you. <laughs> um, is my style is very gentle and very handholdy. Mm. Like I keep trying to bully you into reading Harmony Drive, mm -hmm. and it's very gentle and very cozy and very handholdy. And um, whereas Blazing Hymns, like no, the angels are coming; they're gonna kill us all. Let's <laughs> let's go, <laughs> let's go, let's fight. And uh, high action games are not typically my style. Mm. My style is usually very ponderous and contemplative. And friendly so blazing him was very very different it was also i think the first time i wrote using an srd because mm. you made that an may srd not be true yes but this is your first time working with like another srd yes. or system or something like that before yeah that's exactly cool. it was it was, was so fun was it okay working with it yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah it was um well, I'm trying to, cause I don't have a great memory. Mm. So I'm, this is me like scraping my memories for what it was like when I was first putting Blazing Him together. Mm. Here's the thing. I knew I was going to do this before Lumen was a thing. Mm. I knew this was going to happen before Lumen was a thing because I saw a frame and was like, <laughs> I can hack this into Sinful Gear. Right. I remember you saying that. <laughs> I oh I'm sorry I punched you a little bit, Tag. Oh, blazing him and punches <laughs> you in the gut while Harmony Drive is so sweet. <laughs> so so I, I knew already that I wanted to do this. And then when Lumen came out, I was like, all right, this is the kit. Mm. This is this is how I'm gonna do this. And I've got a friend, my dear friend Nick from Sort of Symphonies, who is always trying to get drives from fighting games into his RPGs. Mm. He's always trying to figure out how to do that. And I realized that I could use songs to do something like that, where like you change the mode that you're in for a combat. Right. And so that's, that was kind of my big stumbling point was how does the music work? But once I hit that, it was all pretty smooth sailing. That's awesome. Especially since Lumen very much specifies that you're not supposed to go ham on, on descriptions for, for powers. It just, short punchy and sweet and figure it out at the table that's that's my mo yeah <laughs> and that's that's been really great actually yeah cause... so i think you mentioned this during our interview and i'm curious like so like how do folks how have you how did you find like with your playtesters because you obviously went through like multiple rounds of iterations of playtesting like how did they did they dig that did they under like 
How did people interact with your interpretation of Lumen? A lot of the people I played with hadn't played a Lumen game before. Mm. So the biggest hurdle was just like, no, you don't have to wait for your turn. You can use your powers literally whenever you want. <laughs> My turn, your turn, your friend's turn, whenever. Uh -huh. Do it. And it, once they got over that hump, they were completely they were completely there. They, they got were, it. Yeah. Everything made perfect sense to them. They spent all their game and then got walloped completely. <laughs> because gain is your backup HP mm. as well. Ah, very good. Very good. And the, only, <laughs> the only reason I made gain and HP interchangeable is because there's so many instances in Sinfo Gear of people doing big powers that nearly killed them. <laughs> Well, that makes sense I, then. <laughs> I wanted people to be able to burn their HP for big power. <laughs> I love that. I absolutely love that. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, um, my whole goal is to say, here's the button that says do cool shit. Just push this button as many times as you possibly can while we're playing it. And like, don't worry about how many times you push it. Just keep pushing it. You'll feel good yeah. about it. Uh, and like, it's, it doesn't matter if it's broken to do. That's the point a little bit. That is the point. I was like, in playtesting, I, I did actually, because there are so many powers in Blazing Him that are about preventing attacks. Mm. Because there's so many, again, I'm very transparent. There's so many moments in Simpo Gear <laughs> where somebody blocks an attack ha happening to an ally. Like, right. It's very team combat focused. And I needed that for Blazing Him. And, um, but I hit this point where like, oh, people are hardly ever getting hit. I'm just going to half everyone's HP. And <laughs> <laughs> so people in Blazing Him have at most four HP. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of HP going around in that game. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. So people do sometimes get walloped. I mean, that's part of the, f that's part of the fun to me. Yeah. Like, I mean, in Nova, your characters are going to die, but I made it so that it's very cool when they die because they get to do their supernova attack like thing. And then they come yes. back to life because I'm <laughs> I refuse to let characters die unless we all are like uh, really into the idea of it. Um yeah. So that's that's cool. I it sounds like uh I mean it sounds awesome. Um I remember when you sent me the list of all the the different like class options and we talked about it and it was very difficult for me to choose. Uh, <laughs> and I ended up choosing one from an expansion, right? Because you've got yes. an expansion. It it hasn't come out yet, right? It has. It, oh, it has come out? Oh, my God. I did it. Oh, my I God. I speed ran it because of the Kickstarter incident. Oh, no. Damn you, Kickstarter. <laughs> Damn you, Kickstarter. So now up on my itch, I'm going to grab a link to it. Yeah. Is basically... Do. All of the digital rewards from the Kickstarter are now on an itch page as well. So if you want to support us without, first of all, buying anything from my itch is going to support Roar to mm. Heaven while the Kickstarter is live. But if you want to get the backer rewards, including Ashes to Ashes, and I also made some uh, platform exclusive hymnals, something that Marlo makes fun of me for, <laughs> but it's okay. So if you like, back on if itch, you get, you it get on the Kisari Gama type. Oh. Ooh. If you back on Kickstarter, you get the stiletto type. Ooh, cat. That's very <laughs> yeah, pre-order bonus. <laughs> yes. This, this is I a real a real gamer <laughs> moment right here. <laughs> it's what Lumen's about, baby. It is. You've you've truly just embraced it. <laughs> I I love this thing that you've done here with creating essentially like a kickstarter like page on itch to be like listen we're just gonna funnel these funds into the kickstarter the kickstarter and everything like that and so yeah people can get the the ashes to ashes uh upgrade or or, or not upgrade expansion there yeah. that's super neat um yeah that kickstarter thing ugh. Uh. that is just like incredibly frustrating in terms of the timing in regards to uh, your campaign i'm like two days. so two days Ugh. i melted down completely melted i couldn't yeah it was so frustrating like w there's nothing worse well no there's lots of worse things look the world is full of terrible things but i gotta tell you looking at a, t a twitter timeline full of people saying they're never going to back a Kickstarter again when yep. you're two days into yours. 
ouch. Yeah. Ouch. It hurts. And um, so that's part of why I speed ran ashes to ashes. Cause mm. I was like, it, I've got to hit the ground running on something. I've got to get itch fund. Yeah. Functioning to some degree. Yeah. Um, and it turns out that like a lot of people really resonated with my uh, screams into the void of frustration <laughs> and actually like promoted and backed roar to heaven. Uh, anyway. Good. So like the day that the announcement came out was actually a pretty good day for us because a lot of people were tweeting my screams of rage. <laughs> and a new marketing some... strategy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw someone who I'd never met before who was just like, hey, these people don't deserve to be screwed over by Kickstarter. Give yeah. this page a chance. I literally wept. I actually did cry oh. a lot. Oh, also, I'm very emotional first thing in the morning. I don't know why. So, so drink that coffee and, <laughs> and that'll balance <laughs> us out, right? That's how it works. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure, that, <laughs> I'm sure that's exactly how it works. But I was just, I was moved literally to tears mm. by um, people's willingness to look at the situation and say, hey, this isn't your fault. Like, Kickstarter is just desperately, desperately trying to um, appease venture capitalists by mm. using buzzwords right now. Yeah, there was absolutely that knee-jerk reaction that I think many of us had, which is like, well, that's the end of Kickstarter. That's the end of my relationship with Kickstarter. And then, like... You're out there like, but wait, please don't yeah. leave yet. Oh, uh, oh yeah. Right. And oh, go ahead. Like, leave once. Like, I'm not starting another Kickstarter yeah. unless they walk this back. But I'm so trapped. <laughs> like, I'm so trapped. Right. Yeah. Like, you can't just, like, pull the plug two days into your campaign. You've been working right. so hard on getting it to where it is. And yeah. And. But. and but this this itch thing is very cool. I think this is, and it seems like the you know you've got a a funding goal there. Everybody loves the funding goal at the top of the page now. I'm I'm obsessed with setting sales goals so that I can watch that thermometer fill up. It's very nice, isn't it? It's a good. I love it. It's a good feeling. Um, I I do love our itch fund page. It's I nice. Back a rewards package, and so if you back that, you will get blazing him. You will get the full session zero of Roar to Heaven immediately. Mm -hmm. You will get uh, all the Blazing Him stuff, the quick start, the character sheet, the organization sheet. You'll get the special Kusarigama type hymnal and Ashes to Ashes, which is a supplement about the ways in which civilians respond to the angel threat. Awesome. That's super, super awesome. Please yes. go check that out if you haven't already. Oh, yeah, Adam, you're starting a Kickstarter after this announcement because you have a really cool card game that you were going to do for Make 100. And then, like, Adam had been putting all this work into it. And then they're like, oh, yeah, and now we're doing this. Adam, I'm still going to back your game because your card game sounds really good. <laughs> oh, condolences, Adam. That's, listen, it's not going to be easy, but I'm here for you. <laughs> it's, you know, I think, I think we've, like, I think a lot of us have learned, like, this is something that I was talking with Chris about last week of, like, it's, it's like, it, like if you and I decide we're not going to run a Kickstarter, that's fine, right? Like we can, we can decide that. But like a lot of people do still count on it as like that's how they survive or that's how they they do the thing. And I don't want to just completely abandon the platform because that's abandoning them. Um, yeah. So I don't need it. But like if other folks are needing it, then I think I, I'm sure I should have going to back Adam's card game because it sounds very cool. Uh, yeah. Go back, what, two weeks in time to see the coffee break where we talked about that? It's pretty neat. Um, coffee break. Hmm? That was a good coffee break. Me I and Adam enjoyed Bell. it. Yeah. So, yeah. We're, we're, had fun. Adam Bell's a he's, a, he's a fine, fine person. And I enjoy talking with him. I love listening to Adam talk about games in general. Um, <laughs> internally chanting to myself that most backers aren't terminally online about this like we are. Yeah, that's what you have to kind of hope yeah. for right now, right? And that yeah. was something that um, Nem from Sandy Pug Games, mm. who, who I reached out to because they offered some uh, some Kickstarter support. Mm. It was like, you need to understand that so many people aren't on Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, but everyone I know is on Twitter. Right. Like, you need to understand that Twitter's not the entire world. <laughs> and, and apparently not. But 
Wow. Right. It's like we experience this very loud chamber of Twitter that we are in way too much all day long. And then we yeah. forget that there's everything else outside of it. Yeah. So, Adam, if it helps, my experience has been that the people who aren't terminally online are going to come through for you. That's how it's been working for me so far. Yeah. I feel like events, so. too, like Make 100, like they bring people like eyes to things that are again not part of this immediate sphere to who are just like looking for cool ass like oh a hundred of this very cool like storytelling card game like myth building game are being made sign me up please I um, like one of them mm -hmm. i'll take two um so sweet this so i'm glad that you know even though the Kickstarter day happened that your screams into the <laughs> void were actually <laughs> screams that echoed back and seemed to have like resonated with folks. I also think this is, like I said before, brilliant that you've done the, like the itch page like this. Um, huh. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's like a, it's like itch funding, but it's, it's also like straight up like a Kickstarter page at the same time. It's, it's kind of cool how it's, um, you know, it's like a, it's like itch funding plus almost in terms of how it's going on here. I I think it's awesome. Yeah. Um, so yeah. I I I'm glad that it is it is going. It seems like from what I'm seeing on itch, at least with that funding bar, people are buying it, people are supporting it. So that's wonderful. Yeah, it's um, it's really what I wanted was for people to say, "Geez, I want this, but I don't want to. Mm -hmm. I don't want to back Kickstarter anymore. I wanted to give them a place where they could say, you know what." That's valid. Yeah. Here's how you can still support us. Hell yeah. That's and awesome. Aaron spurred me to do that, and Aaron is never wrong. Thank <laughs> you, Aaron. Excellent work, Aaron. Well um, done. So let's let's talk about AP stuff. Like I wanna I, AP. So we because we talked about this during our interview. So for folks who aren't familiar, Kat interviewed me a couple weeks ago. Uh, so, so we're sort of kind of reversing the tables of sorts. Um, and talking, like, I want to just talk about APs in general, because you obviously have an ongoing AP and everything like that. Like, how is this going to be different than that? Do you, do you, do you feel like it's going to be like super different in terms of like for you personally, like, is it different going to be, feel different running it or is it going to feel familiar to you? It's I'm. Mm. <laughs> mm. Because, because uh sort of symphonies um award-winning podcast sort of symphonies mm -hmm. like, has a uh an extremely laid back pace mm. it's very slow it's very cozy it's very low-key fantasy it's um it's been described as kind of like cozy dark fantasy mm. and it's like we enjoy playing at this kind of slow, vivid pace where yeah. we take our time with scenes. And that's absolutely not going to be possible for Roar to Heaven. <laughs> <laughs> We've got 12 episodes. We got no time to screw mm -hmm. around. We got to we got to go. Right. So, so I, I'm going to have to have a much firmer handle on the camera than I do in Sort of Symphonies. Mm. Cuz in Sort of Symphonies I can be like, okay, Kathleen's feeling her way through something. Let's see where this goes. Okay, Kirsten's got an idea. Let's follow this. Yeah. But in in Roar to Heaven, I've got to be like, no, we have a combat to get to. Do you guys want to get your asses kicked? Go or not? fight. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. So that actually kind of so you got twelve episodes. That's the plan, right? That is um, the plan. Yes. So I'm I'm curious about that. Um, from like a GM perspective, like, are you having? Do you have a sense of like what? Uh, like the arc is across those 12 or are you like you just know that it's going to be 12 and you're going to just see where you get to after 12 episodes <laughs> shrug <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna figure it out i have some ideas but um i have some ideas but i'm waiting until the kickstarter is over so mm. that i can Focus my energy on promo, mm. and also so that I don't, uh, you know, get my little heart set on a storyline and get broked. I don't want to get my little heart broke. Right. <laughs> That's fair. I don't fair. want my little heart to be broke. So, uh, in in January, if the Kickstarter, uh, if the Kickstarter funds, then I'm going to be spending that time focusing on, uh, planning Road to Heaven, mm. 
instead of freaking out about solo but not alone right did these back to back why no idea why not <laughs> no clue why am i like this i hate promotions why am i like this promo is the hardest thing in the world for me it's the hardest so it's i and like for a while i was uncomfortable doing it um and then uh, shouting back to Chris Bazette where they gave very good like I just remember Chris constantly early on me like you just have to be okay with shouting about yourself a hundred times every day and it's gonna be okay if you do that so I've gotten over the hurdle of like feeling icky about promo and now exactly like you said it's just exhausting it's just like I yeah. don't want to do it I'm fine doing it I, I don't feel like oh don't look at me I feel like I just don't want to do this I can't I just don't want to yeah. I can't be bothered and actually, Chris was a big inspiration for me because if you've ever, oh, you have, you must have the tweets that come out of Chris mm -hmm. when uh, Chris is in Kickstarter mode. Oh, yeah. Are so powerful. So and good. So honest and so raw. <laughs> like, <laughs> prepare to hear this a hundred times a day. Troll king, asshole. <laughs> troll king, troll king, troll king. Like, so powerful. Right. I'm like, you know what? You know what? I can do this. They I know can... what they're doing. <laughs> I can't I can't be that ham yeah. maybe, but I can work up to it. I think what well my <laughs> what my plan was before was if I was gonna do another Kickstarter, I think my max Kickstarter was gonna be two weeks. Cause like I've done a couple thirty days and I just I can't do it. Like my brain dies after that long. Um, because there's the inevitable plateau period in any campaign, and it just the plateau period is longer <laughs> in a 30 day. I've done 20 days, and those are like, at the end, I'm a little itchy, but I'm like, okay, I got through it. But now I'm like, if I do it ever, it'll be two weeks, 10 days maybe, and I'll just see what happens in 10 days and just move on from it. Because I think roll I could. Bones. What? Yeah, exactly. Just like, roll them. I think I could shout excitedly about a game for about 10 days before I'm like, okay enough i don't even want to talk about i'm not even excited about this anymore one of the great things about roar to heaven is that while it's difficult for me to be excited about my own stuff it's very easy for me to be excited about my cast they're mm. perfect they're beautiful none of them has a single flaw so <laughs> if they did have a flaw it would be that they're sometimes a little bit slow getting me promo materials that i can mm. tweet out and if any of you are watching you know who you are but <laughs> honestly the ones the ones who aren't probably aren't watching they can't they can't they're avoiding your eyes they're avoiding their shame <laughs> avoiding my avoiding my <laughs> judgmental gaze but like i found it very easy to be like hey you want to hear kendo in a podcast mm -hmm. i know you do he's amazing you want to hear jordan they're fantastic yeah what is your life your life has no errand right like it's very easy for me and then it's like oh by the way cat's there <laughs> don't worry about it that too <laughs> that was that was one of the nice things about doing promo for the slayers almanac was that it's 10 incredible writers who are way more interesting and better than me and so i could just be like look at all of them aren't they amazing oh, i'm just perfect. cool i'm just i'm just the person like making sure everybody's like getting the stuff done but they're the ones who are doing the really cool stuff go look at them uh, yeah. That made it a lot, lot, lot easier rather than me being like, and look how cool I am and look what I made. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yes. I, I'm was... slightly encouraged by the fact that Blazing Him is also the prettiest manual I've ever made. Mm, that helps. And so it helps. always helps. I have physical copies of it now. They're so pretty. Ooh. Are they, are they nearby? Is there something? Wow. Pretty! love that that's awesome and this you got from uh tabletop hot dish yeah that's awesome so pretty inside neat so i went i went completely ham on this layout i don't know what possessed me but <laughs> i remember i sat down for this layout and i was like i need to make this the prettiest manual i've ever made in my life and the most rainbow that's and the most cool. slightly threatening <laughs> That's that's the vibe we're going for, right? 
it's beautiful Rainbow, but in a scary way well right i mean that's that's i mean you get these like angels coming on high you're like oh how how beautiful and you're like oh wait this is a threat <laughs> this is not yeah. good that they're here <laughs> they're coming to do a murder to us it's... we have to fight the rainbows and angels this is a problem for us <laughs> this is, yeah this is not okay <laughs> um dice ghost asked a question earlier that i i do want to like give you the opportunity to, to talk about it here because we talked about it before but like how the ap paces with like the lumen thing and you mentioned it a little bit before like how you have kind of a plan of like a combat and a, a scene setting thing you mentioned earlier about like a scene you're setting and a scene another person setting can you can you talk to me about that because that's stuff that i love i love that tech of like letting the players hold the camera essentially um i do that a lot through like question asking uh, so i'm curious like how you how you do that well according to the to the rules of the game as written by me, <laughs> me cat. Um, according to the rules it basically anything that's out of combat mm. is a player is directing a scene and maybe the gm can butt in if they have an npc they'd like to introduce in the scene or if there's something they'd like to do but they have to get permission from the person running the scene that's so um, cool if they want a scene to devolve into combat like an angel attack to happen mid scene they need to make sure the players in the scene are on board with that before they go ahead and i like the intent was so that everyone could go around and have their own scene mm. but we don't have time for that right what we have is four ep 12 episodes <laughs> for cast members mm -hmm. that's math baby that's tricky math but we figured it out we that's, figured it out that's very cool so basically every uh each of my players is going to get three episodes that are theirs that they can use to describe their scene and further their character development my scene is going to be used for plot stuff okay cool setting up threats mm -hmm. setting up objectives stuff like that but the character development scenes are going to be in the hands of my players i just think the the the, the rule itself of if it's outside of combat, it is the player's scenes. They're the ones who hold the camera. It is unbelievably good tech. And I think it's also brilliant for a brilliant addition to the concept of Lumen. Because, as we talked about before, I didn't think about outside of combat stuff at all when I was writing Lumen. Yeah. I was like, I don't have, I don't know. You'll figure it out. Um, and it sounds like you have figured it out in the coolest way ever, Kat. <laughs> Yay! Oh yeah, by all by all means, steal it, do it. I think that, um, like when we did our sample one shots, I was like, "Does anyone have a scene?" And at first, there was a little bit of hesitation. Then someone was like, "Actually, I would like to have a scene where maybe I take this other character out for lunch because we just had a difficult fight." Mm. And That's super so, cool. yeah. It, it took a little bit of warming up, just like the concept of being able to use their powers whenever they want. Sure. But once they warmed up to it, absolutely. We got some gorgeous work That's super... out, of, out of people. Um, that was where I learned that uh, Kendrick can go from comedy to drama in five seconds flat. Ooh. Makes your head spin. It's a sign so, of a... That's, so powerful. That's a good <laughs> cast member to have right there. Absolutely. Uh, Dylan is just as powerful at character development in and out of combat, which mm. I think they were the only ones who demonstrated that they uh, had that power both in battle and out. Yeah. Jordan had the most minute, little detailed, beautiful descriptions hmm. of things that their character was doing, ways their character was interacting with things. Like genuinely jordan has the, the most incredible picture of what's going on like my cast is the other thing i found out is that all my cast is forever gms ah that's amazing <laughs> they've escaped the cycle <laughs> they've escaped and now um that also means that i've selected for people who because they're forever gms and i did that accidentally that's just how it came together mm -hmm. but they're perfectly comfortable being like this is my scene and this is what we're doing in my scene right because they're GMs. Oh well, that's yeah. a that's a, a happy little accident right there. That's amazing yeah. that that worked out I that love way. It. Um, I'm curious uh, because I, I, I'm going to keep alluding to this interview. So if you're if you're watching this or listening to this, you have to go listen like to it. this interview. Oh, good. Uh, it's 
because we talked about you asked me about how like I there's not really rules in Lumen for out of combat stuff. I'm curious, are your characters picking up the dice or anything outside of combat, or is it just we're just chatting sort of thing? We're just chatting. Nice. They're just because um the rules are that the only people with stats are hymnal units. Mm. So if you get knocked out of your hymnal, say you get absolutely clobbered by a fourth chorus angel because Tig spent absolutely all of their uh their gain. Just hypothetically, um, if, just that hypothetically were to if that were to happen to somebody, <laughs> then you are a civilian and civilians don't have stats and have one HP. Gotcha. Okay, you so can... <laughs> So you're <Sorry. laughs> So the attributes that are nor are, are attributed to the the hymnals, not to the the pilots themselves, sort of thing. Yeah, cool. Exactly. That's so... awesome. Well, that helps <laughs> differentiate it then too, right? That helps you just understand, like, when I'm in this mode, I don't have any stats to look at, so I can just kind of do, right? I can just go yeah. and just do what I want. Um, and it also it kind of also helps set up the fact that these are super powered mech suits, like yeah like tempo is faster than any human speed mm -hmm. so you can accomplish things that are faster than human speed because human speed doesn't even register on this scale mm. that's super neat volume doesn't even register on a human scale <laughs> <You've>, <laughs> the call no. out has been acknowledged in chat <laughs> Okay, look, in, in Tag's defense, Tag was the first of two people to make the exact same uh, scenario occur Excellent. within that one shot. I think so. that just means that it is a it's a thing to lean on. If if two people have done it, now we're starting to see a pattern. People want now, to do this. <laughs> <laughs> now it's a pattern of using too many powers and getting punished. And that's <laughs> in their defense. In their defense. <laughs> I would have done some real messed up shit mm -hmm. if those enemies had been allowed to stay on the field. Mm. So burning all their gain to let get the enemies off the field was the correct choice. There we go. It just ended in them getting clumped. There we go. <laughs> These things have to be done sometimes. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, yeah. I mean, this game sounds like... It sounds so fun. It sounds amazing. And it sounds like you've been doing some really cool stuff to prepare. Like, the AP is going to be... Like, here's what I'm. Ex here's one of the reasons I'm super excited about the the AP. Not only because again I'm incredibly biased because it's a Lumen game and it's the first yeah. Lumen AP I'm pretty sure out there. The first podcast. There's yeah. Been some streams. Yeah, like I've seen some like Lumen one shots and stuff on. I don't know if there, anybody's done anything that's like multiple sessions. I've been on streams and run Lumen games, but like yeah. I think this exactly like you said. This is the first podcast and this is the first maybe like series. So I'm incredibly biased about that, <laughs> how cool yeah. that is. Um, but I'm also, the reason I'm so excited about this is because of all this this process you've done ahead of time. Like you've gone through this audition process. You've done these play tests with people because I've I've tried listening to some APs where it truly is like the first time they've sat down and played together. And you're like, oh, what? <laughs> I will sit here and listen to you all figure out how to play this game and how to play with each other. And then eventually, like a few episodes in, you've got your rhythm. But you all are going to just be able to jump right in and be like, boom, we're in. We're playing it. And we get it. They all know how to play the game now. That's awesome. How quickly we forget, we forgot in extreme. That's right. I played on it. I got to actually play in a Lumen game. That is so rare for me. I am one of those forever GMs. Uh, yeah. I'm one of those people that just never gets to <laughs> so many betrayals. <laughs> Ten anime betrayals. I don't know what you expected from me. <laughs> Here we go. Um, so cool. H how much longer is the campaign going on? I I, I closed the the page. January fifth. January fifth. Okay. Yeah. So we got time. We got we time. We got time. We got time. I shouldn't panic, and I'm not panicking. <laughs> and I shouldn't if I am, but I'm not doing it. Well, good. I'm glad you're not panicking. <laughs> yeah, you got you got like a little over two more weeks then. This is awesome. Wait, well, January 5th? Yeah. You said, that's the day that I sign and get my house. We'll both be Yay! celebrating that day. <laughs> we'll be partying. Ideally. 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 Fingers crossed that I'm celebrating. <laughs> yeah, likewise. <laughs> likewise, I assure you. I've been told that the math 
indicates that we will fund. Ah, I love the math. I love it when the math does that. I don't trust mathematics. <laughs> mm. Math has betrayed you in the past. You've been hurt by math, I can yeah, tell. Been hurt by math. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Math and I have backstory. Oh, yeah. Party, party at my house, exactly. We'll have a big yeah. uh, celebration party. Blazing him at Spencer's place. We're all going. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Let's do it. Be... Yeah, absolutely. You should place Blazing him with us. You weren't able to make the last one shot, but you need to. I do. I do. Please, yes. Because I'm doing training one shots, and you're absolutely invited to come play with us. So. Well, I'm in. I'm in winter break mode now. I'm my semester oh, is over, yeah. so I have like. I've washed my hands of the semester, and I'm ready to 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 do stuff. So to party. Yes, exactly. I'm ready to sing some yeah. songs and kick an angel's ass if that's what do I it. get to do. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. Um. Well. Sweet. Oh, you're, you're bringing the Jägermeister? Oh, God. Roland. Roland. Natty Ice and Jaeger. Roland. Roland. Bad. Bad. Next thing you're going to say, you're going to bring some Malort. Roland's a Chicago local. Knows the <laughs> danger of Malort. It's poison. I did know that. It's because the worst. I put a copy of I Came Here to Win in an envelope headed to Chicago. Oh. I've heard of it. I've heard of Chicago. Yeah. It's a pretty cool place. So that's, oh, oh God, Kickstarter fulfillment. <laughs> yeah, I just finished I'm that with that Nova. Right and I'm so glad to be done with it. It is a process. It's just me. It's just me yeah. stuffing these books into the envelopes. Mm -hmm. And my envelopes are too big. Here's what I've learned for the future is that I will, any any sort of campaign that I do in the future will be much simpler. It is one thing and it's only the one thing having nova in paperback and hardcover and then offering slayers hard covers and lumen srds as add-ons meant that like weighing out packages was all kinds of wild and everything it's so much easier if it's just the one thing roland is lying <laughs> Malort is not the sweet nectar of the gods it's yeah the worst no, gods which gods yeah <laughs> <laughs> the worst gods. <laughs> um, oh, great. Now I'm having horrible flashbacks. God, I'm not a drinker anymore. Same. I used to be. Yeah. Same. Ugh. Time makes fools of us all, I guess. <laughs> Something like that. Um, well, Kat, this, oh. is, this has been super neat. Is there anything like that we didn't cover that you want to talk about? Like... Um, there was, there oh, was something shoot. I wanted to talk about. No, my brain. No, it was Kickstarter fulfillment and how annoying it is. Never mind. It we is. did talk about it. We, <laughs> we did. We both bemoaned it for a moment. See, uh, I'm blazing hit, um all of the physical rewards for for Roar to Heaven. I have over there, mm -hmm. over in the other room. Yeah. So I at least have that. <laughs> like, there's at least that. It's done. And just waiting for you, looming in the other room. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, so thank you very much for having me. This has been super fun. This has. I'm glad that we got to chat again, right? Like, yeah. it was cool chatting with you a couple of weeks ago and, and, like, following up on it and just seeing, like, how things are going. I'm glad yeah. that the campaign is going. Folks, let's throw that. Ch I'm going to just throw the link in the chat again, just in case. Just in case. Um, if people are like listening to this, because I am putting this out in podcast mode now, Kat, what's the best way for them to find this stuff? I mean, we're on Twitter at Roar to Heaven. Okay. And the Twitter, we're constantly tweeting about the campaign. <laughs> so <laughs> pick any tweet from our Twitter and it'll have a link to the campaign and the itch fund. Excellent. Um, you can also find links to that stuff on peachgardengames.com. In the header, there'll be a little bar for Roar to Heaven. It's got all the Roar to Heaven stuff in it. Sweet. Excellent. So, yeah. folks, please do go check that out. Please do scream about these things on Twitter. Uh, you got to do oh, it. You. you simply you simply must scream about these things. You must roar, if I, if I may, Yay. about these things. Um, it's awesome. Oh, I'm, I'm unbelievably excited about it. Uh, I can't wait. I can't wait to listen to it. Uh, and I also can't wait to get it on one of these one shots uh, over the next yeah. couple of weeks. That'll be fun. Um, 
All right, folks. Well, thanks so much for hanging out with us this Sunday uh, for another really fun, wonderful coffee break. Um, next week, I haven't finalized whether or not I'm doing coffee break because it's the day after Christmas and I, I don't know what the plan is. I might have somebody lined up. I don't know. So just keep an eye out on Twitter. I'll, I'll, I'll shout about it uh, at some point. Um, if you missed the stream or missed part of it the vod will be up on twitch uh youtube and then uh, also a podcast version of it now so if you if you like podcasts you can also catch all of this on most of your major podcast things i think i've got it set up but whew, i don't really know what i'm doing so if it's yeah. if you find like no episodes anywhere i'll figure it out <laughs> Um, if you need help with podcast nonsense, I do that. So. Oh, thank you. Yes, I probably yeah, like you're gonna up. get like a desperate DM like two days from now where I'm like, oh my god, I, I thought uh, there's no episodes up. Can't wear all my episodes. Yes, okay. yeah, I'm here. I'm absolutely here to help. Um, also, so you might be streaming on Boxing Day, one of the most sacred days of my people. Oh, oh, well, I can't do that. No, you absolutely can. It's for lounging around and doing nothing. Oh, so it sounds like the perfect day to do. Uh, Why a do coffee Americans break? not have Boxing Day? I don't know what this thing is that you're describing. <laughs> the day after, it's okay. The day after Christmas is a stat holiday in Canada. It is a federal holiday. It is Boxing Day. Okay. Why is it called Boxing Day? I think it's when you put stuff in boxes. It might be when you punch that, each other. That but tracks. That might be, that, I'm not sure, honestly. But all I know is on Boxing Day, uh, Canada tries to do its very best impression of Black Friday. Oh. And mostly people just lounge around enjoying the shit they got the day before okay cool so that sounds like a great day for us to hang out and drink coffee yeah. and, and talk about things um yeah cool all right well once again i've done a classic spencer campbell like long rambly goodbye one of these days i will learn how to do this but today was not mm -hmm. that day cat thank you so much for being here this was an absolute blast and thank you oh. to everybody in chat who's been hanging out you all were super super fun um yeah. we will see you all possibly next week if not the week after bye, bye everybody.